today on the TMZ Podcast. Hello and welcome to the TMZ Podcast. I'm Charlie Cotton and joining me today is Derek Kaufman. How are you, Derek? I'm doing all right. It means you either have legal stories or stories about marriages in peril, which is it? <laughs> <laughs> which is, your, you have? is your marriage in peril? I mean, define peril, you know? No, it's fine. It, we just rumble along. How about yours? Mine is going great guns. You do. You have a very strong bond. We're a little frayed, yes. but, but the bond is tight. Yes, yes. You, <laughs> I like Mary. She's a lovely lady. Everyone loves Mary. You're very Mary. lucky I to love have Mary her. To of course. We're a big listener of the pod. <laughs> uh, so we're going to talk about today. Yeah. I know you've been here for many years at TMZ. Um, one of the biggest, most famous paparazzi photos ever is this Britney Spears bald. When Britney Spears had that meltdown, shaved her hair, those photos, I mean, I can picture them now. Like, they're the most famous ones. And we now know, like, what led up to those photos. Yep. So we'll talk about that. Uh, Tommy Lee just revealed that he used to drink two gallons of vodka a day. Yeah, I want to really dive deep on this to to determine whether he's just rock star puffing or this is something he actually did. We're, we're going to get into it. Okay. It's a lot of alcohol. Very good. Uh, but to begin with, the Hadids are all receiving death threats. Every member of that Hadid family, Gigi, Bella... Anwar, the mum, Yolanda, the dad, Muhammad, and even their extended family who have been doxxed, who have been like... They're, they're they put numbers. their phone numbers out. Yes. So people have been searching for the Hadid's relatives, um, all because of their pro-Palestine uh, defense and their... their the way that they're conducting themselves on social media. Yeah, I, I think, look, you're seeing the worst of social media and the worst it has to offer its full blooming potential of awfulness, right? Ever since Elon Musk took over Twitter, now named it X, it's a free-for-all. So people are nasty, doxing is back, all the stuff that had been kind of cleaned up in some ways when Twitter was run a little bit more... I don't know, professionally than, than <laughs> just some guy's toy. All the awfulness comes out and the Hadids are really feeling it. I, I think Gigi, when she initially made her statement, so she was silent for a little while, then she made a statement that was very measured, very focused on the victims of this tragedy, the Israelis who were who were killed, the Palestinians who are 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 have been killed or are going to be killed in Israel's response. She was measured. She was balanced. And she said, there's I, too much symmetry in the sort of like thinking of the victims of this particular one and being the victims of the other. And she, she, she wanted, people wanted her to just, Take the side of, I don't know. Yeah, a lot of people think of this as both sidesism. You know, yes. like everyone was upset when Donald Trump said, hey, there's good people on both sides. When people come out and say, I'm worried about the victims in Palestine after Israel is retaliating over these attacks, they're saying, well, you're missing the picture. That's not the people you should be concerned about. What about the tragedy? And and everyone wanted to shift their attention to, oh, Israel's going to overreact. Yeah, it's it's, it's so, like in, in September 11, it's like if, if, when, if that attack happened and in the days following it, Everyone was like, let's think about the victims over there. That's right. Of, of, of the people we're going after right now. No one was thinking about the people that America's now going over and sort of bombing their little civilians. That's right. If you remember, I mean, we are a pretty divided Congress. I don't want to go too far sort of on a detour, but it was nearly unanimous that everyone got together and said, let's go into Afghanistan. You remember? Yes, like, yes. can you imagine all the congressmen and senators voting on in the same direction on something? It takes a, a tragedy of that proportion. But in Israel, the response has been different. Everyone is nervous because Israel is very, very powerful and they're going to go into Gaza, which is very small and, and densely David, populated. It's David and Goliath. It's, it's a messy situation. And, and so Gigi, her first statement was balanced, and her next one went a little further in the pro-Palestine direction, and the state of Israel attacked her. And, and they said, have you been sleeping? You're not worried about beheaded children and so forth. And so now I think that, that was seen by people as, oh, she's inching up. She's ratcheting up her pro-Palestinian mm. stance, and now people are very, very upset. They send death threats. This is outrageous. To dox people and right. send death threats over their political positions is disgusting. I, I think there's no defense for this either. Because they are Palestinian. The they Hadid. are. Muhammad is Palestinian, so she's half Palestinian. Yolanda is Nordic of some sort. Yeah, she's yeah, very, she very blonde. I don't know exactly where she's from, but she's not Palestinian. Um, and so they identify that way. And, and people who are Jewish identify with Israel, and that's why you're seeing these sort of factions. Totally. I think this whole social media element to this awful conflict has been such a fascinating part of it just because you, you're damned if you do or you don't. I can understand, you know, in the wake of such a horrific tragedy that, you know, try to just be measured and, 
and and feel for the victims, the current victims, not yeah. like looking your head forward to like, but what about the future Palestinian victims? It's it's just very hard to thread the needle. And so, but virtually I virtually so impossible. So I don't think that like the Hadids or anyone should be vilified for whatever they say, the nuance of their words. Like I think. We just got to live and let live. Yeah, reducing it to posts of this nature. Kylie was obviously a very pro-Israel stance, and she took it down when she got flack. Gigi is now probably going to get a little bit more quiet. It, it silences people, and you actually do want some debate. You want people to feel comfortable espousing right. their views. There should be a discourse because it's nasty, and we there's no talking. Everyone sort of runs to their positions, and they're worried over death threats. So you don't actually make any progress. It's, it's The saddest thing is there's been so little progress in terms of how we talk about Israel and Palestine, and this conflict has gone on since you know for, for you know 100 years before yeah. the state was even created so it's very very sad and it's i think it's going to get worse that's that's the the issue is i think there's going to be sort of human rights issues that go on as this moves forward and, and Israel's response ratchets up and what happens to Gaza and what Iran does so i just think we're at the beginning so right did you hear that um Taylor Swift's security guard uh, Israeli guy has gone over to Israel, has left America in recent days yeah. to go and fight Hamas. This is like the human face because he's he's at the Eras tour, which is the most relevant thing in our world for what the past six months. Yes, and this guy went viral, kind of. He was dan uh, he was doing security detail for Taylor, and now he's going to fight Hamas in, yeah, in he, Israel. He went viral because he was so handsome. This handsome guy leading her around. And now to hear, we don't know his name. He didn't want to be identified. Yeah. Um, but now we hear that he's going over, obviously risking his life when, when he had it so good. Yeah. Like, as you say. As a security I, I, job, there's no better than the air. Is, is there any yeah. better than being a security for Taylor Swift? Yeah, I mean, she takes care of all her people. That's like famously her thing. So, I mean, he did release a statement sort of like talking about how he just can't sit back and watch on as this is happening to his people. And so he felt compelled to go. What a hero. Like, you know, what an amazing thing that he's going to do. It's crazy. I mean, he, he's Israeli and he wants to sort of participate in this conflict. Their attitude about their existence is they feel constantly threatened. So it's not like us when we go to war and you and I would never be drafted. I was in college. Right. And it's like it's a different attitude. We're such a big country and we have a separate army distinct from us that goes and battles and we're supposed to wave flags for them. When you're Israeli, you go fight. I mean, yes. everyone is a participant. Under famously. 40. Under 40. Everyone under 40. I remember when I went to when I was at Harvard, Natalie Port was there and she had served she was like a member wow. of the israeli everyone has to serve under under a certain age and their attitude is we're all part of the country so we all have to defend it that's amazing it's just different so yeah this will be interesting it's it sort of adds a human face to yeah that that is here that is going overseas because it's easy to feel very removed from the whole thing they're all over there in the middle east and it's abstract to us but it's very real for that it, guy. It, it's like um when the ukraine russia stuff broke out yes people were calling for those guys from dancing with the stars to go back there what's it maxim maxim Cheremovsky or whatever his name yeah, is yeah saying you should go back but they, but they were like no nah, i'm good over here i'm good i'm gonna keep my tight pants on <laughs> right. with the glitter i get that actually yeah. i'll I, be supportive over here i'd be the tight pants glitter guy <laughs> all right on to our next story Why... oh, we, didn't, we didn't solve israel palestine <laughs> yeah, yeah. we're gonna move on okay we'll do that tomorrow on the next episode uh why is britney spears bald she answered that question for us oh well she will answer it for us in the memoir she's teasing the memoir man but we got a little leak from the memoir and this is why she said she was bald she writes i'd been eyeballed so much growing up I've been looked up and down, had people telling me what they thought of my body since I was a teenager. Shaving my head and acting out were my ways of pushing back. And then I had to grow my hair out to get back in shape. I had to go to bed early and take whatever medication they told me to take. Yeah, that's what she's saying after the conservatorship. So she acts out because she had just, she snapped. I mean, you and I weren't at TMZ, but I remember at this time when it happened, yes. but I remember processing it by reading TMZ and seeing just like, someone come apart in real time because the paparazzi photos were just showing her at gas stations, following her around and shaving her head and so forth. And now in her own words, she's saying, I, I just, I, I couldn't deal with it anymore. I had been gawked at. I was a sex symbol. I was told what to do. And she just lashed out. She was acting out. And then she says the conservatorship came in and she's saying, they said, Hey, snap out of it. You're the cash cow, grow your hair out, get back in shape and get back to work and take this medicine and stuff all that down. And she's so upset. Like apparently the, the expert, the excerpts that she's releasing are like, these people controlled my money and my body for years and in so this conservatorship. This, and it's outrageous to her. I kind of get then this, this is a middle finger to them. If, yep. if they were trying to place all these restraints on her, be them physical or mental or however, 
Um, I can understand her just doing something like totally out of the norm just to sort of get their attention. But then again, it only makes you think that she does need a conservatorship when someone does this in a very public way, because this wasn't just shaving your head and coming out onto a red carpet. No, she shaved it for the paparazzi in, to in see a glass building. Yes. You, know? yes. you see the little rat's tail at the back yes. when it's half done, you see the whole and it's just like that's intentional. That they that's are, a cry for help or or, re or really. a show of attention. And so she got it, and it's just interesting now to sort of that she's talking about that time, which yeah, I mean, being a sort of we don't call ourselves paparazzi, we we call ourselves field reporters. That's right, field producers, field producer. Because I don't only, only report, but stories. I produce the clip. Yes, but in the paparazzi world, like those are like the most. So expensive, probably pictures. They're the biggest. They're like the creme de la creme yeah. of paparazzi shots. And for her to like give the background is kind of interesting. Yeah, they were really like involved. I remember the conversation about paparazzi where they were perceived as sort of predatory. Part of the story, the reason she was acting that way was because they were taking photos of her and harassing her. So there's sort of this interaction. Usually, you think of photography as passive, just mm. like capturing a moment that otherwise isn't there. That wasn't the way it was discussed back then. It was like, oh, these guys are following her, and she's you know jabbing umbrellas at them. You remember that, that? that umbrella photos and videos? Now they're some of the craziest ones. I'm not, I won't say crazy. They're, they're nuts. They're some of the, the photos are nuts. The photos yes. are nuts. But so are you interested when you, when you read this stuff, she wrote a memoir. A lot of times I'm, I'm always interested to see with the passage of time, everything seems less dramatic, right? Mm. Like everyone says time heals all wounds that the cliche exists because like, as time passes, you forget like what you're so angry about a little bit. And, right. and it just seems to lessen not with her. She's like, as angry as ever. She's as angry as ever towards <laughs> right. her family for doing this to her. And she just always like revisits it in her anger. And it makes me think to you, you said, look, it makes you think that maybe she needs to be in a conservatorship. She, she can't deal process these emotions in a constructive way. But to me, it thinks it makes me think, Wow, what was that like that she can hang on to that anger for so long? The grudge is like so deep in her bones and she's like, how dare they control my money and my body for so many years? And I don't see it lessening. Like I just no. see it staying at this like fever pitch and I wonder, there's a sadness, like that's her family. Do you think they'll ever, will she ever just say like, I don't even remember what I'm angry about. What was it, 12 <laughs> yeah. years of the conservatorship when she's <laughs> hey, lived dad, 70 years? Come I on over, you, dad. dad. Let, yeah, let's break bread. I don't know about that. Want to get a sandwich? Yeah. So- if you could only read one memoir, yeah, Britney, Who are you pick? Britney Spears or Jada Pinkett Smith, which would you pick? And, and I kind of ask you this question yeah, because I don't know which one I'd rather read less. Yes, I, I understand. You're interested in neither of them. I'm interested but which in, one am I interested in? Which one would you choke down? I would probably fire up the Jada one. And this really? is why. So Jada, so Britney is explaining something that we all sort of were interested in for a period of time. Her bald head, the, the shaving of the head, the, the umbrella picture. And she's saying, this is what was going through my mind. But at the time, there Same was already said, some reporting. Same could be said of the Jada memoir. But Jada had had a whole like Potemkin village, man, you know, like where it's like a facade of, of, of reality that we all kind of ate. And we were like, Oh, they're like the it couple. They were considered before Jay-Z and Beyonce, the power couple of power couples, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, of a sort. Jada was huge. She was in the Matrix movies. Obviously, Will Smith is one of the biggest stars of the past 35, 40 years in, in Hollywood. And they were the it couple. And for seven years, they were separated, and we were all just like, oh, there they are on the red carpet. What a cool family, Jaden and, you know, the, the girl. Willow. Whip, whip your hair. Yeah, you know, they Willow. were just a big, big family. And it was a lie for a lot of the time. So that's interesting to me how they were able to pull it off, what yeah. everyone was but, thinking. But also, is that what the memoir is about? Is it like How I Did It by Jada Pinkett Smith? <laughs> a little bit. But, 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 but I don't even know what, if it is, because even last night on the Colbert show, she's walking back. Her, her statements that her and Will are done. She's kind of saying, no, no, he is my man now. So the truth over the past few days has evolved. So what's in black and white that you wrote six months ago? I don't know if I can believe those words anymore. I think she thinks, and Will Smith to a lesser extent, that they're operating at a different dimensional plane, man. You guys wouldn't understand. We are family. They always say, I'm never leaving Jada. We're not getting a divorce, yet we lead these separate lives. You you plebes wouldn't understand. You're in conventional marriages. They sort of think of themselves at a remove as a sort of a special family, and she's trying to communicate this weirdness to the world that's like, whoa, it's this is like lying to us, and it's not, it's landing. not landing. It's making Will Smith look weird and 
been bad. A lot of people are calling him a cuckold. Like, it's not good for Will Smith, certainly. So now she's starting to, like, walk it back a little bit and say, like, hey, sorry about uh, all the hoopla, but I was just spitting truth. I, I, I'd read Britney Spears. Over, you would read over, Britney? Over Jada. All right, well, Although neither of them Why wrote, don't we agree to read neither? N- neither no. of them either even wrote Let's... their own memoirs. You know what I mean? They're sitting next to the guy or woman that is. But they're telling their story, and he has to, like, turn it into prose. So I, I, I don't envy that guy. On to our final yeah. story. Tommy Lee just revealed on the Bill Maher podcast that he used to drink two gallons of vodka a day. And he's shocked that he's still here, that he's still healthy. Bullshit. Oh, this is how I read this story. So there's a certain like rock star element that, and I'll tell you why. Here's my theory why it is. So every rock star likes to say, oh man, the days when I was a rock star, we used to get hammered. And there get is laid, truth. Get, get laid. Get laid all day. All lo- You know, we stay up all night and sleep all day, the whole <laughs> thing. Okay. And Motley Crue definitely party. There's no doubt about it. They were on the Sunset okay, Strip partying okay. hard. Tommy Lee at the, at the forefront of that. Two gallons of vodka at a man his size. I think you black out and it doesn't reconcile with he was getting laid all the time and his winky was working pretty well. I don't think you can drink that much and have you got to pick a lane. Yeah. Were you the sex god or were you the vodka king? Because I don't think both are true. And I think you'd rather stay the sex god who was banging Pamela Anderson. Correct? Uh, Yes. Here's the lie. Do you believe that story? I I do believe him. Like, do you believe him when he says he had sex with like five women a day? Yes. You you believe that? I I chose that lane because I've seen the... I've seen what he was working with. He was the king rock star. We've all seen it. And it is... That was who he was, at least to me. Yes, I know, but I mean, you, and this is a new. Like, you said oh, he's not so built. He's, he's not built the right way. Guys, a but the guy's your size. Could you drink two gallons of vodka? Me? No. 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 Well, you would pass out at half a handle. I know, but he's got like doesn't fat soak up the. Where's his fat? Where is his fat? You tell me <laughs> where Tommy Lee's fat is. He's he's got he's, drink, he's drinking a gallon a gallon for Tommy and a gallon for the penis. You're saying that hammer was his saving grace. Yes. It was just like absorbing all the liquor. Yes. That's interesting. I like that theory actually. I, I want to revise mine and think about it more. <laughs> Tommy no, I, so, so I, I read that and I was just like, this is such a fun story because he's now says he's healthy. He said his doctor did a, there were reports that he had liver disease because mm. you drink that much, you're going to mess up your liver. But he says he's clean as a whistle. He lives with Brittany Furlan, like his wife, right? Yeah. I, I went out to dinner with her one time. No way. Yes. Are they nice and normal? They're really nice and normal. I can't remember why we went out. We went out one time and I think I, I thought. Oh, it, you went out on a date with her. Well, I thought it was a date. <laughs> but one time I saw her and him at LAX and I went up to them both. And I said, hey, Brittany, remember me? We went out for dinner that time. And she didn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> At least you were before Tommy. You don't want to follow I that act. You don't want to follow Tommy. that act. I wouldn't either. At least you're in her earlier life. That's no, funny. Sir. Okay, Derek. All right, good time. Thanks for joining me, mate. Bye, we'll guys. See you here tomorrow, guys. Bye. 